In this presentation, Riley, Ian, Denica, and myself will demonstrate a validated solution method to the traveling salesman optimization problem using a genetic algorithm implementation. In addition to detailing our working solution in the form of a Python program, we also investigate the suitability of our approach to solving the traveling salesman problem in terms of the efficiency and accuracy of the solution method. Firstly, here is Riley to explain the problem and why it's so computationally complex. The traveling salesman problem, or the TSP, is a classic combinatorial optimization problem in computer science that has been studied for around 90 years. In the problem, a salesman is trying to complete a Hamiltonian cycle on a list of cities, whilst minimising the distance travelled in total, that is, the least cost route. By measuring the speed of solving this problem, we can compare the efficiency of different optimization algorithms. Aside from its use in theoretical computer science, the TSP has many applications to real-world problems. Actual travel travelling salespeople may find this problem useful, and it may also be relevant in planning the movements of truck drivers and ships, or in designing microchips. There are many variations on the travelling salesman problem. Although we are following the standard symmetric case, where the distance travelled in either direction of the city remains the same, one variation which bears mentioning is the asymmetric variation. In this version of the problem, the distance from A to B can be different to the distance from B to A. This might occur in the real world as a result of different speed limits or one-way streets. Why is the TSP challenging to solve? Despite having been studied for so long, the TSP is currently in practice very computationally challenging to solve. In computer science terms, it's known as an NP-hard problem. To understand what this means, we will first consider the difference between P and NP. P is the set of problems which can be solved in polynomial time. For our purpose, it suffices to think of polynomial time as just meaning fast. NP is a set of problems for which you can verify that a given solution is correct in polynomial time. If we modify the travelling salesman problem so that we are trying to find a solution less than a given limit rather than finding the optimal solution as is the intent of the original problem, then we can easily see that the problem is in NP. Once we have a proposed solution, it's easy to check if the solution is correct by adding up the distances, checking to make sure that every city is visited, and that we have arrived back at the starting point. To continue with the explanation of why the travelling salesman problem is challenging to solve, there are two more classes of problems to discuss, NP-complete problems and NP-hard problems. NP-complete problems are the hardest problems in NP. That is, any other problem in NP can be reduced to an NP-complete problem in polynomial time. NP-hard problems are problems which are at least as hard as NP-complete problems, but they don't necessarily have to be in NP themselves. It can be shown that our modified version of the travelling safety problem can be reduced to the NP-complete Hamiltonian cycle problem, which indicates that our modified version of the traveling salesman problem is also NP-complete. As previously mentioned, we have to find any solution below a given limit rather than the optimal solution. Clearly, finding the optimal solution is a much harder problem. Hence, we can see that the original version of the traveling salesman problem is NP-hard. There is controversy over whether P is equivalent to NP. Whilst most people think that P is not equivalent to NP, this is still yet to be proven. However, if this view is eventually proven to be correct, this would mean it is mathematically impossible that there will ever be a fast way to solve the traveling salesman problem. Now here is Denica to discuss how we have used a genetic algorithm to solve this problem. A genetic algorithm is a meta-heuristic based on natural selection that is often used to solve optimization problems. It is a type of evolutionary algorithm based on the theory of evolution that can be used to generate or identify accurate solutions to optimization and search problems. Common terminology used when discussing genetic algorithms includes genes, chromosomes, population and fitness. In this example of the traveling salesman, each chromosome contains a list of tuples to represent the possible paths taken by the salesman to the cities, with the tuples being X and Y coordinates on a Cartesian plane. These tuples could also be referred to as genes, and the possible solutions that are each stored in a separate chromosome can be grouped together and be called a population. The fitness test that will be applied to this population will measure the distance between the tuples and try to identify which chromosome contains the shortest path, also referred to as the cost of the path. 
During the fitness test, the parent chromosome will be modified if required to create new children using crossover and mutate methods. The crossover method involves using part of a previous solution and combining it with part of a new solution to form a new chromosome. The mutate method, however, swaps out values in a solution using random indexes. The purpose of utilizing such methods is to try to determine the best outcome to the problem by testing various combinations of potential solutions. Solutions are encoded into a genetic algorithm using many different methods such as binary, tree, value, hexadecimal or permutation encoding to name a few. The method of encoding chart chosen is largely dependent on the type of problem to be solved. In our presentation today, we are examining the traveling salesman problem to which we have applied the permutation encoding method. Permutation encoding is used when problems require the data in a specific order. In this example, we require the cities to be in an exact order to represent the salesman's path, which is why we have stored them as tuples within the chromosome. Now, Ian will explain how we implemented our software to generate the algorithm. Thanks, Danika. For our solution implementation, a class has been created to define, control, and modify the behavior of the program. On instantiation of a class object, variables are initialized to set the mutation rate, population size, and the number of nodes in the graph, referred to as cities. Cities are generated with random x and y coordinates and stored in a list. Using this list of cities, the starting population is generated. For each population member, the list of cities is shuffled and stored in the new list in the population list. The order in which the cities appear in each population index define the path. After initialization, start is called on the object where the program will start processing the population either with or without a graphic representation. The call loop of the program involves calculating the fitness of the current population, checking if the shortest path of the current generation is shorter than the all-time best path, and generating the new population. For calculating the fitness of each member of the current population, first the path length is calculated for each member. This is done by taking each pair of adjacent cities in the list and using Pythagoras' theorem to calculate the straight line distance between them. These distances are then summed to give the total length of the path for the population member. Once the path has been calculated, it is compared to the all-time best found path. If the new path is shorter, it is stored as the new best. The fitness for the population member is then saved as the inversion of the path length. Since shorter paths are the goal, this will give shorter paths a higher fitness value and vice versa. Following the calculation of fitness values, the new population is generated. The new population is set to an empty list of the same length as the current population. Two parents are found by calling the accept reject function and the guard is in place to minimize the chance of the parent elements being identical. Once the parents have been selected, the crossover function is called to generate the new child element from the parents and the child is then mutated. Once these steps have been performed on all new child elements, the new population list is stored as the current population list. The algorithm for parent selection involves finding the maximum fitness value for the current population and generating a random number between 0 and the population size. Another random number is then generated between 0 and the maximum fitness value. If the fitness of the population member indexed by the first random number is greater than or equal to the second random number generated, this parent is selected for use. Otherwise, the process repeats until a suitable parent element has been found. The effect of this selection method is that population members with higher fitness values will have a better chance of being selected, while not completely eliminating the chance of lower fitness population members of being selected. The crossover function for generating the child element operates by selecting a random integer n between 0 and the number of cities. The first n elements from the first parent are added to the child to define the start of the path. The remaining path elements are then inserted from the second parent in the order that they appear, ignoring any elements already inserted from the first parent. This results in the child having the correct number of unique cities in the order which takes on characteristics from both parents. The mutate function iterates over the child element, and for each city in the list, a random number between 0 and 1 is generated. If the random number is less than the mutation rate, the current city is swapped with another randomly selected city. Running the solution on small city counts with a relatively generous population size of 500 generates the best path extremely efficiently. For 10 cities, the best path was found in less than a second and only taking 17 generations. Comparatively, a brute force approach for 10 cities takes upwards of 45 seconds on the same machine.
As the number of cities grows, however, things become exponentially more complex. As the number of possible paths increases with every city added, more genetic diversity is required to find better paths through the graph. It becomes apparent that the genetic algorithm won't always necessarily converge on the absolute best possible solution, and there is a trade-off between the amount of genetic information, i.e. the population size, and the processing speed. Diversity can be provided through increasing the population size and changing the mutation rate, although as shown here, increasing the population size can significantly slow the processing speed for each generation. For cases where an approximation of the best solution will suffice, this is an appropriate solution. Thanks, Anne. As Riley discussed earlier, using a genetic algorithm modifies the original optimization problem in such a way that the difficulty of the problem is reduced from NP-hard to NP-complete. And as Ian just mentioned, our modified TSP performs much quicker than using a brute force approach, with both algorithms finding the optimal solution for small numbers of cities. But however, this does not hold for large numbers of cities. More cities mean more possible paths, which affects the runtime of both versions of the problem. Although the genetic algorithm will still find a solution quicker than a brute force, it's more likely to end up finding an approximate solution, one that's close to optimal but not equal to it. A brute force approach, however, will always find the optimal solution, as long as you're not in a rush to get your answer. How close the genetic algorithm gets to the optimal solution depends on several factors listed here. The bottom line is that for few cities, using a genetic algorithm is a great choice. For many cities, if an approximate solution is acceptable, a genetic algorithm is again a suitable choice, but if your application of the problem requires the absolute optimal solution, a genetic algorithm might not be the most suitable choice. The main limitation of our model is that we will often only end up with an approximate optimal solution due to the exponential time complexity. The greater the number of possible paths, the more information the method needs. However, adding information into each generation with our crossover and mutation operators increases the runtime significantly. The constraints of the chosen methods and operators limit the solution's optimality, which results in a trade-off between efficiency and accuracy. Now here's Denica to discuss the unit learning outcomes. The unit learning outcomes have been demonstrated throughout this submission as follows. UL01, through the application of genetic algorithm to the traveling salesman problem. UL02, through the design and implementation of the Python genetic algorithm solution, as well as the Python Bruce Force solution to the problem programs created by our team member, Ian, that we used to demonstrate the effectiveness of the algorithm and proposed solution. And finally, UL03 has been demonstrated throughout this presentation as we explained the theory behind the challenge, discussed the algorithm chosen to be implemented, and provided an overview of the design and use of our program. To conclude this presentation, we have prepared an overview that demonstrates the different tasks undertaken by our team. As you can see, each team member attended group meetings, conducted independent research, contributed to discussions and prepared documentation, as well as contributing to the presentation by recording the sections of the script they wrote. Additionally, Sarah prepared the presentation, integrated the voice recordings and prepared the documents for submission, whilst Ian designed and coded the program.